The story of functional airspace blocks is about the quest for a safer and more efficient European sky and reduced costs for passengers as European air traffic continues to increase. But will functional airspace blocks be a new tale of success for Europe despite inevitable bumps in the road? Let's look at our challenges, achievements and where we are going next. Flying was once reserved for the elites, with so few aeroplanes in the sky that congestion and delays were unheard of. Then in the 1950s, more comfortable and quicker planes were developed. People began travelling for business and leisure more regularly, and airports adapted appropriately. In Europe, some 40 air navigation service providers were mandated with ensuring safe and fluid air traffic in their sovereign airspace, where coordination was, until then, almost non-existent. During the 1990s, the European Union liberalised air transport. Competition put pressure on fares and increased public demand. Air traffic increased sharply, nearly saturating the air traffic control system and main airports, and leading on peak days to congestion and massive delays. The working methods and systems of air traffic control had to evolve. In 2004, a new approach was launched to create a more performing airspace, the single European sky. The concept of functional airspace blocks was developed based on the idea that cross-border cooperation is the best way to solve problems together. FABs were seen as one means to achieve the single European sky targets of increased safety, increased capacity and reduced cost of air navigation services. Its concept is very clear create seamless airspaces between neighbouring countries, with traffic organised by operational needs, rather than the scale of one country alone. By 2012, nine functional airspace blocks, varying in size and organisation, were created, involving each state's national ministries of transport, its air navigation service providers and the military authorities of each state all with a firm intention and willingness to improve cooperation and performance of air traffic beyond national borders and air traffic control performance. European airspace covers about 11.5 million square kilometres. Traffic is dense and complex. It is used by over 10 million commercial flights per year, almost 30,000 per day, mostly involving cross-border traffic. Functional airspace blocks are focused on solving technical and operational issues together instead of being focused on regional matters and thus collaboratively support the implementation of the European air traffic strategy to the benefit of passengers and airspace users. The many concrete achievements so far include improvements in airspace design and the handling of flows like free route airspace or performance-based navigation data link implementation, cross-border traffic management tools, joint procurement of air traffic management systems, coherent aeronautical information inside functional airspace block states, common basic training curricula for air traffic controllers within each functional airspace block and more. But not all problems are easily solved since every state remains solely responsible for its own airspace different life cycles for renewing technical equipment, different priorities for airspace usage, financial considerations, non-EU interfaces and questions of labour rights all can create difficult hurdles to overcome. Not all scenarios require the same solution approach. Sometimes fine-tuned bi- or trilateral cooperation makes sense and sometimes projects involving members from different functional airspace blocks can bring benefits to all airspace users with continental and intercontinental issues, such as volatility of air traffic, weather phenomena influencing air traffic management across borders, performance measuring mechanisms which don't reflect the reality of the industry, and others. Now, thanks to the functional airspace blocks, it has become natural to cooperate and to find operational solutions together. And so far, this is the most profitable and politically acceptable way to make our safe and efficient European air traffic management system evolve in the right direction. And why do we think this? 
because it works for the benefit of passengers and airspace users who fly safely and efficiently in our European airspace.